Hey everybody, I'm Ozzy, and today we're going to talk about Egan Lair and all of the liquid staking Egan Lair derivatives. If you don't know what Egan Lair is, check out my video on Egan Lair staking that I put out a couple months ago. I'll tag it up above. And if you haven't checked out my latest video about how to turn $1,000 into $53,000, definitely go check that out. It's definitely worthwhile. Now, Quick summary on what is Egan Lair. Egan Lair is a restaking platform where you can take ETH or liquid staked ETH, so Lido ETH, Swell ETH, uh, a few different other varieties of ETH, and stake it with them. And what they'll do is they'll use those validators to go help secure other networks, so other blockchains, in exchange for rewards and boost the rewards that your ETH and your ETH validators get. Right now, most ETH validators will get somewhere around 4% a year, and that's great, but what if you could get more? And the other thing is their security, so securing the network, which is what validators do, is generally the most expensive thing for new blockchains. So if you've got these hard, this hardware that's already running validators for ETH, it will become cheaper for new blockchains to also use the security and incentivize it. Egan Layer is talking about a 10% per year growth rather than a 4%, which is pretty nice for stakers. That's a nice, you're talking two and a half times the amount of rewards. I, I say that's pretty nice. Now, I don't really have a problem with Egan Layer. I think what Egan Lair's business idea and concept and approach is incredible. I am personally farming their airdrop and think that they are the great kind of innovation that's coming out of this space. Being said, there are a lot of copycats that are starting to show up. Every cycle, we have a house of cards. In the last cycle, that was Terra Luna, FTX to a certain extent. Although it wasn't the same kind of house of cards that Terra Luna was in terms of UST and Luna essentially being pegged to each other and, and causing a very easy collapse once one of them depegs. And those house of cards really spell the end of any bull run. They are always new, that cycle. And everyone thinks they're really bright and shiny and exciting at the start of the cycle. And Everyone sees them as massive yields and great way to, to earn all you can during the bull, during the bear market. And then aren't. And billions of dollars are liquidated from the system. In today's video, I'm going to break down why Egan Lair native re liquid restaking protocols are starting to worry me and make me think that they could be this house of cards and they aren't necessarily copycats a lot of them are essentially here's an alternative way to access the egan layer airdrop the egan layer airdrop and their deposits are capped right now except for native eth so if you've got 32 eth you can spin up your own validator and stake it with egan layer but otherwise you can't so we've got all of these new projects that are spinning up where, hey, we'll bring you all of your ETH with us. We'll go restake it natively for you with Egan Lair, and we'll share the Egan Lair points and the rewards with you. Now, generally, I don't mind that. That's a, a good way for other projects to basically for people to get access to the Egan Layer airdrop. However, I do have an issue with what's been developing since then. These projects have been offering liquid staking versions of it. If you think about back in the early days of ETH staking, Ido offered a liquid staked version. So you had a token that represented your staked ETH that you could then trade and later on you could borrow against. However, in this case, what we're seeing is we're seeing all of these new projects pop up 
I know of a, of at least six or seven. We've got Kelp Dow. We've got Pivor. Pivior. There's several others um, that have all spun up offering this. And diversity in the marketplace is great. Competition helps drive innovation. However, what started to happen is we had Gearbox. They're offering Egan Layer restaking. Up to 9x leverage, I believe, and 25x on uh, native restaking. So that's a whole different ballgame. You're talking about massive amounts of risk and something that could really negatively impact the whole ecosystem if it collapses. And the worst part about it is it's not the only thing that's happening. We're already seeing lending and borrowing protocols start to spin up for the lending and borrowing of these liquid restake derivatives and that concerns me because all of these projects are so new they're most of them in most cases only a couple months old and we're now saying that we are 100 percent certain about their smart contract strength and security that we will allow lending and borrowing against them and essentially introduce more leverage into the system. It's one thing with, with these projects if you're just offering people a way in, but now you're offering leverage on something whose smart contracts haven't really been thoroughly tested or tested over a significant amount of time. We don't have strong enough knowledge on whether whether they will hold peg whether there's any smart contract risks that they could get hacked none of this is known right now and in layer and its restaking alternatives are now at over three billion in tvl every cycle has a house of cards that collapses and it looks bright and shiny when you first see it and Everyone thinks, oh, there's no reason, no way that this collapses. FTX, Terra Luna, Last Cycle are two perfect examples. But at risk of sounding alarmist, I feel like restaking and at least these liquid staking derivatives could start being that house of cards. It doesn't take a lot for something like this to go wrong when you're introducing this much leverage into the system. One, one of these projects depegs or gets hacked. And now not only do you have multiple hundred millions of dollars that were in Egan layer that are being lost. So if you were just natively restaking, that's $300 million potentially in, in a hack. But now if you've got leverage, that lending and borrowing platform could be out 300 million. You've now taken out $600 million from the system. And if that lending and borrowing protocol had collateral against, was using some of that, those funds as collateral, that could cascade down the ecosystem. And so that's a pretty big house of cards. And that's not even considering a potential bank run on other protocols after the first one gets hacked. If the first one gets hacked or depegs, that usually creates a ton of fear in the, the market. And you'll see everyone rushing to withdraw their staked ETH or their restaked ETH. And so now you've got potentially five, six billion, a billion dollars in protocols that are just being liquidated potentially depegging and causing the lending and borrowing to collapse. That was one of the biggest things that caused the Terra Luna collapse was just a massive bank run on UST and on Luna when we started seeing the, the depegging. And you, it might not happen now. It doesn't need to happen right now. But in when the, the market starts getting tired and We've hit our bull peak in 2025. And there's, and someone gets bored and wants to find a good way to make money. They go hack one of these projects. A lot of these are being spun up like that. In reality, that doesn't take much coding for these projects. They're essentially 
coding a deposit, giving you a token, and aggregating all of that ETH into validators and spinning them up. That's all that contract's doing. But when it's got access to all of that ETH, you are creating some massive risk, especially when you start at introducing leverage and lending and borrowing against this ETH and this liquid restaked ETH. It's a new protocol. There's just not enough history here for, I, I think, the market to sustain that risk. Could I be absolutely wrong? Yes. I, I could be an alarmist, but as someone who has lived through previous cycles and seen the previous House of Cards collapse, this is one that has me concerned. It wasn't at first, and I'm still restaking with Egan Lair natively. But do think that you've got to take some caution. I'm actively avoiding all of these new restaking protocols, the liquid restaking ones, because I fear that they are wait for a smart contract. hack. It is a disaster potentially waiting to happen. I, I am not what I would say. I'm more of a cautious investor than... I'd say others in crypto. I'm not huge into meme coins, but I feel like I've got enough experience here and I'm and to identify a risk. And if you think the risk is worth it, absolutely go for it. I was running the math and lending and borrowing against your liquid stake ETH and do it looping it three or four times could potentially double your staked value, which could mean double the points, double the airdrop. But remember, you've got to trust each of these protocols and trust that their smart contracts are secure and audited and aren't going to get hacked because otherwise all of those points mean nothing. So keep that in mind. Please be careful. The bull market's just starting and I would hate for anybody to get wrecked early in the bull market and miss out on all of the amazing gains that are coming again with a thousand dollars go check out my previous video you could i, I show you the math on how you could easily turn that a thousand dollars into fifty three thousand dollars i i think that's worth it that's a pretty nice set of gains right there so rather than get stuck in high leverage situations explore it look at different ways to earn and grow your portfolio. I think there are still monumental gains to be had, and I can't wait to work with all of you in achieving them. I appreciate everybody watching. I'm Ozzy, and I'll see you next time. If you want to chat and tell me what you think about whether restaking is a house of cards, let me know in the comments. Also, if you've got any cool airdrops you want me to talk about, drop them in the comments as well. I'm watching a lot of different things, Linea Park amongst others. Keep farming and I'll see you guys next time.